Hey, this is Amanda back with another Fairy Stamper video. And today I'm going to be using the orb stencil to make it look like a peacock feather stencil. <laughs> That's what I saw when I purchased this stencil was peacock feathers. And so that's what I'm going to be doing today. So I started off with blue blueprint sketch distress oxide, and I'm just filling in the little centers of the orbs, or as I'm going to use them as peacock feathers. And <clears throat> I'm just using a small blending brush. These are very helpful for a uh, little detail stenciling. I have some smaller ones, but I don't mind that the colors that I'm going to be using are going to blend in a little bit or blend together a little bit. Uh, so I don't mind that I'm going a little bit outside of the area that I intend the blue to be in because if you look at a peacock feather, it's not exactly perfect. Nature is not perfect. So I don't mind that this is going a little outside the area that I intend it to be. Now, I looked at this after I did all the little areas and I decided that I wanted that blue to be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to go over each and each and every area with prize of ribbon instead of the blueprint sketch. So I did cut some of that out. So you did not have to watch me do that all over again, because I know the ink blending can be a little tedious to watch, but I did go over each one of those areas with prize ribbon. Blueprint sketch was probably fine, but I decided to go over each every each area with the prize ribbon. So now I'm coming in and doing the little area that's underneath the blue with peacock feathers. Again, I don't care that this is going to go um, into the prize ribbon area and it's going to go into the into the top area, the, the part above where the prize ribbon is, um, the part that's curved. It's like a, a C shape that's on top of those. I, I don't know how to describe that, but the part that's above those areas, that part's going to be brown. Um, on this. I don't mind that that's going above because again, these are going to blend together. It's going to give my um, peacock feathers a little bit more interest. And again, nature is not perfect. So I'm not going to show all of this stenciling. I'm going to cut some of this out uh, here in a second, just so you don't have to watch all this tedious ink blending because it is tedious. And I'm even going, sometimes I'm going purposely outside of the area just to, so my colors will blend together and give it a little bit more interest. So we are done with the peacock feathers. I'm going to wipe my stencil off. The reason why I am wiping this off is so that my brush doesn't pick up a bunch of that color and I don't get my colors really muddy. Even though I do want some blending, I don't want my colors to be extremely muddy. So my last color here is going to be a vintage photo and I'm going to fill in the rest of the stencil with the vintage photo. So the reason why I chose these colors is because I did pull up an image of a peacock feather and looked at it and the peacock feathers mostly had blue, like a teal color, um, brown and green. So I started with a green cardstock base. I'm going to do the, the blue for the, you know, the blue part, the peacock feathers for the teal part. And then I'm using the vintage photo, obviously for the brown part. Again, I'm going to cut some of this out so you don't have to watch me do all this because it is tedious, I know, <laughs> but I did want to create this, um, this peacock feather background. Now, of course, this is what I saw in my head was peacock feathers, but once I created the bath background and I'm like, what am I going to do with it? Because there isn't a peacock, <laughs> um, stamp for very, for the fairy stamper stamps. Um, so then it kind of. I kind of got a little bit of a block trying to figure out what I was going to do. So I just decided to use it as a regular old background and treat it just like I would with any other ink blended background or anything that I would use for my fairy stamper stamps and not get stuck on the fact that it is a peacock <laughs> feather background. Um, so I didn't have any grand ideas past the fact that I saw it as peacock feathers and wanted to make it peacock feathers. <laughs> it would have been really cool if I had some kind of a peacock feather stamp that I could use, um, but I didn't. So I just rolled with it. So now I am wiping it off again and then I'm bringing out something that I used to use all the time and I haven't used much anymore is my DIY shimmer spray. It's just perfect pearls in the color perfect pearls and some water. Nothing real fancy. I didn't want to remove my stencil because I just wanted it on the parts that were ink blended. And then I'm taking just some regular water, spraying that on there because oxides do react with water. And I did some big, big droplets and some little droplets. So I just kind of did like some half sprays on my water bottle. So I got some big droplets and I did 
just some regular sprays to got, get some mist. And then I took my heat tool and I set that because when I took the stencil off, it wasn't very, um, wasn't very impressive, but once it dried, it, it did, um, look really cool. And I'm not a patient person. So I did heat set that instead of letting it dry naturally. So now I'm just going to go to my background and I am using the toadstool stamp, which is a very old stamp in this very stamper line or the fairy hugs line. <clears throat> and I'm going to stamp this in, uh, pine cone, which is from versifying Claire. I'm just going to stamp this a couple times to get a nice clean impression. And then I will move on to stamping my fairy and I am going to use peony, which she is one of the newer stamps in the last month or two, I believe. And I'm going to set her on top of, um, the toadstool stamp. So this just shows that the newer stamps do work with the older stamps. You can definitely mix and match new and old. They all work together. It, you know, the fairy stamp, the fairy stamper, <laughs> or fairy hugs line, definitely you can mix and match and they all work great together. I am stamping her in Nocturne <clears throat> just to have a little bit of contrast between the mushroom and the, uh, the fairy. And then I chose this sentiment believe, and this says always believe something wonderful is about to happen. And I am stamping this in Nocturne as well. And that will finish up the stamping for the card front. And I will move on to stamping my inside sentiment. And I chose my fairy for this. And this says, if you have seen a fairy, but I have found this one for you. If you believe with all your heart, she will make your dreams come true. And I thought that was a very cute sentiment for the inside of my card. Now, when I stamp over oxide inks, you tend to get, I don't know, this weird kind of <laughs> variation in the color of your stamp, um, where the oxides are. So I have found that if you use, um, a Stabilo all, um, colored pencil, I think any colored pencil would probably work for this, but I have a Stabilo all one and I just go in and cut, um, color over the parts where the oxide is and it makes a nice dark impression where my stamp or makes a ni nice dark area, um, to cover that up for my stamp. So it just takes a few minutes to color over that. And then you can see where I just showed you that the fairy was nice and dark. And then the, uh, mushroom did not, um, it still had the, where you could see the oxide shining through. So I just went and took an ink tense pencil and found a color brown that matched the pine cone color and covered that up. So this is my finished card. I mounted it on some blue cardstock. I put some, um, fairy drops, um, over the top or had, had some embellishment and I did a few little colored details. So I hope that you enjoyed the card today and as always have a great day.